Not good Eves. I have a rather somber, if not entirely sober, message to spread. Now, I know I'm not entirely the Or maybe I am. Let me start that again. I've, I've wrote or written. <laughs> I didn't wrote no script. I haven't written any script for this particular thing. I've just gotten home. It's pretty late. It's um almost 11 p.m. and it is a Thursday evening, the third of. Um, September 2020 and the reason I went out earlier was to look at the full moon rising I love a full moon okay. I'll actually get another one tomorrow night which will be cool too because it'll be Friday night and I won't have work in the morning except I do have a work thing to do at 7 in the morning which Means I have to leave home at 6.30. I mean, day off. <laughs> but that's all good. It's no problem. That's what I do. I'm a workhorse. There's a workhorse of the universe, which is what vortex energy is all about. I'm not bragging, I'm not skiting, I'm not saying how much better I am than anybody else. We all have our own role here in life, our own particular thing. My thing is thousands of my things is to take care of those who cannot speak for themselves. You might not see it in the slaughterhouses, the screams, the agony, the reluctance to walk up and have their brains hammered in and their throats cut so they may be strung up through sharp hooks through their ankles and hung upside down as they slowly bleed to death, hopefully dead before they get carved up into pieces. Slabs of flesh that humans take great delight in eating and consuming and digesting And shitting out as though somehow it's a reflection of the great hunter ancestry that they came from. You killed that thing, now you can devour it, bring its spirit into you, and as the ultimate insult, shit it out. You have conquered it. It's 
So on this full moon tonight, the 3rd of September 2020, I went out. I took a bag with me. I put four carrots into it. And a couple of other things. Being unable to find the particular grooming instrument that I preferred to use, I took my own personal hairbrush instead. I took a small bottle of oil, my own personal oil that I use as my own skin and hair tonic. It has several essential oils in a coconut oil base. Anybody who's followed my channel before would know what they are, so I won't have to repeat them now. But the horses that I went out to greet tonight were so very appreciative because horses, especially here in this warm northern rivers climate, they get attacked by all manner of biting insects. And their only defence is their powerful tail. They've got power immense. But the tail only reaches so far. They've all got a soft spot right on their flank. And fortunately, fortunately, some people have enough sense to at least keep two horses together. So they can stand head to tail and use each other's tail to flack away the insects that attack them. Because these people don't have enough sense to know any better method. I get shit to bits. Yeah, we see a lot of horse properties around here and sometimes the horses are covered in like a coat, like a full head, hood, coat. Drives me insane. These poor animals, they can't even scratch against a tree properly. So anyway, I gave both those beautiful creatures a, um, a good rub down with uh, my skin tonic. essential oils and gave them a good grooming and both of them stood stock still from the moment I started groom just head to tail back to head walk around the other side head to tail and back again These poor creatures, they're just stuck out in a paddock. They don't even have a roof over their head. Like, we get some severe rain here. What are they supposed to do? Just stand there, heads down, put up with it. Some severe cold, put up with it. There's barely even a green blade of grass for them to pick at. The poor things. They're starving. So I'm making this as a reminder to myself as to what I'm going to do is to uh, at least stop by a rural store and get a bale of loosened straw so I can just chuck them over a sheath every so often, you know, maybe every day. Not my horses, not my thing. But there they are stuck in an outdoor prison. And all I got to eat is grass. Did anybody stop to think? Same with horses and cows and sheep and whatever other ruminants. Did anybody ever stop to think that they want to eat grass? Or you just look at them, plough into it because obviously, oh, that's all they need to do. 
keep them in the lawn and mowers in the open paddock. Maybe they're just eating that out of necessity. Maybe they need something a little bit better. But they're forced to endure in their open air prisons to do nothing but eat grass. And because they're so hungry, they do it all the time. And so us dumb humans say, oh, well, we can keep so many head per acre or hectare. And it's good for them. Look how fat they're getting. They're not getting fat. These poor animals are lean as they are so lean, they have to spend 90% of their waking hours grazing on fucking grass. I mean, how would you be if, you, if all you had to eat was grass? Maybe they actually feel like bananas, grapes, carrots, apples. And maybe they wouldn't have to spend their whole entire time grazing on some fucking grass. Besides being able to give them the opportunity to find some sort of shelter from the weather... Besides being able to give some opportunity to avoid predators like most of the humans that enter into their existence, people who do not consider my fellow brethren at all, I tolerate you. But I look forward to the day where those who look upon animals for how much flesh they contain. I look forward to the day when you people are considered murderers and criminals. Not even worthy of being locked up. But at the same time, I understand the human condition, as did Moses. Moses had to understand the human condition when he came down from the mountain of Ten Commandments and said, Thou shalt not kill. They were ready to freaking hang him on a rope as well. They were ready to crucify him. Because, you know, why does it? But we love our flesh. We love eating cows. We we love... Well, you know, they had to stop eating one another. Somebody's dead baby. You know, that was... Started to become forbidden. That sort of shit. But, um... So Moses had to smash those tablets and write out ten times ten more rules so that thou shalt not kill... However, if thou must kill, then maybe only cloven-hoofed beasts. Um, yeah, so no more eating dog or cat or rat or whatever. But cloven-hoofed animals, they're okay to eat. But those same animals love their children just as much as we love ours. I mean... Any mother who has breastfed their own child to the breast, held it in her arms, knows the love and connection of mother to child. All mammals feel that same connection. They might not have hands within which to hold and 
comfort and cuddle, but in their own way, they offer their breast to their young, who has the instinct to want to suckle and feel the love and the energy from mother to child. All mammals feel that. All mammals. Egg-laying creatures, even they have a strong preservation for the protection of their young. It may not be quite the same. We may not hear the same screams when they lose their young, when they miss their young, when someone takes their young away from them, or when they're being brutally slaughtered. But just because you can't hear the scream doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And so, I spent quite a bit of time out in the field after climbing the barbed wire fence, getting tangled up a bit, and calling for my horse brethren. I say brethren, but they were both fillies. I don't know if there's an English word for sistrum. Sistrum. Sist. They're just my animal friends. And eventually, they came running as soon as they saw me. They're just like, oh, it's him again. I've spoken to them before, but it has been a couple of years since I've returned. And so on this particular return, um, all I had was two carrots each. But at the end of our um, meeting in the I stood there for 15 to 20 minutes talking and I said because it seems I am the one charged with the responsibility of listening to the animal world and conveying the message to the human world. It's a heavy responsibility. But I'm not going to shy away from my responsibility just because some people might think I've lost a screw or something. Do I look like somebody that's lost a screw? No. I'm the man who's made up his mind that in the coming months I'm going to enroll into a course to become a psychologist. And I'm going to specialise in criminal psychology hopefully on my way to become a detective for the human peace force. And I stress that because it's coming. We're going to lose our outdated, overdone, overused, police force, policy enforcers, that's all going to change. When the peace force comes in, 
See, I, I, I had two paths I could go down. One was to become a psychologist. The other, which I really strongly felt I should do, was to study law and become a lawyer and to defend the innocent victims who were persecuted by the law. But this is where I found the deciding point is that I would rather hunt down and persecute the scum of the earth, the true scum, the villains, the real criminals, rather than to be paid to defend them and try to get them off as I probably could. I'd rather be on the other side. I'm on the side of good. So if you are an utter scum criminal, I'm under you. And I see it from nature's point of view. So some of these people are held as upstanding members of society. People who are making blood money. Money from the flesh of living creatures. The future is coming. And I'm going to be the one. Prosecuting. Petty criminals, on the other hand, are they criminals? Or are they people dispossessed from society because of people like you? There's a lot of poor people in this world who are forced into doing something that man has made a law says you can't do. And therefore you use the rule of law to prosecute them, to persecute them, to imprison them, enslave them, or basically just make their life a living hell. The real criminals are at the top of that chain of criminal and you know it. But you have a brotherhood. You have this collective. You've got this You pay for protection. You can get away with whatever you like. As they say, presidents are elected. Kings make themselves. I'm here for all those who've been persecuted, for all those animals in open air prisons. the 
coming solstice next June 22nd, I will be turning 50. For whatever that means. For the way we measure time. And I feel I've just beginning. I'm just starting to realise what it is I want to do when I grow up. Most slaves get forced into it when they're teenagers or even younger. What are you going to do when you grow up? What are you going to do when you grow up? What career are you going to take? What method of slavery are you going to choose so you can go along to get along in an unjust, corrupt system? I kind of dropped out a bit. I've raised three children. Two eldest chemical engineers double degree each no work of course but they did their thing the youngest she's doing a science degree she's going to become a veterinarian because she grew up in the environment she's practically born in the pet shop that I was running at the time and I was an ethical pet shop owner all the puppies and kittens came home every night no question about it. But, you know, I, I did it because I had to earn my wings somehow as a businessman. No experience. Jumped into it. Turned a closing down business into a thriving enterprise. I was young. I was dumb. But I learnt, and I succeeded. I did well. And now I'm at the age where, yeah, you know, I get accused all the time. Oh, what degrees have you got? What sort of education have you got? And it's like, I've got life education. Some people learn by degrees. Other people learn by holes. Whole learning. Holistic learning. A Gnostic, Gnostic, as it's spelled, is a Noah. What else was a Noah? Or well, Noah built an ark. What's an ark? Arks are like a rainbow. What are rainbows like? Domes. I knew about domes long, long ago before I realised. If we're going to protect ourselves from external attacks, we build ourselves around us a dome. And then it occurred to me, what if we've already been built? Anyway, I'm digressing a little bit there. The thing is, I've now reached the stage in my life where I know what I want to do when I grow up. And basically, a criminal psychologist is just going to be a side thing, you know, it'll just be a degree. Because I'm already a knower. And I know who the real criminals are. Yeah. And they know who they are too. Presidents are elected. Kings make themselves
welcome to earth. <laughs> oh, by the way, it occurred to me tonight that the real Santa would say, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah. The true bringer of Christmas would be going, ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. <laughs>